Tomorrow morning, Kansas City, Missouri will begin to gradually reopen, but with plenty of restrictions still in place. Kansas City's Martin Augustine joins us live with the very latest. Martin. Rob, one of the painful realities of this quarantine is it been getting together for a wedding, getting together for a funeral. A couple of the most momentous and emotional events for a family to gather have had to stop. Well, starting tomorrow, you can once again gather for a wedding, gather for a funeral in Kansas City, Missouri. You can also gather for religious services, too, but there are restrictions in place. If this event is going to be indoors, the maximum number of people you can have there is 10. Outdoors, the maximum number is 50, and you have to have social distancing uh, either way in that situation. Also, starting tomorrow, some businesses previously labeled as non-essential can start to reopen. Retail shops, salons, things like that. But if they are reopening, they have to follow the 10-10-10 rule in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, what is that? Well, you can only have a maximum of 10 people inside the business or what would be 10% of the business's occupational maximum, whichever number is larger. And anybody who's in those businesses can only be inside for a maximum of 10 minutes. Otherwise, the business owner needs to collect a name and some contact information for the city health department. What's that all about? Well, in case there's another outbreak or a continued outbreak of the virus or an outbreak that can be traced back to that business, then the city health department can get a hold of people and let them know they have potentially been exposed to the virus. Now, we're coming to you live here from the B&B theaters up in the Northland. Great place to come watch the movies. I've been here many times myself, but it is not open and it will not get to start reopening tomorrow, nor will dine-in restaurants, bars, gyms, playgrounds, museums. Those all have to stay closed. They get their chance to start reopening on May 15th. Reporting live in the Northland, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. All right, Martin, thank you so much. Well, meanwhile, health officials have these recommendations as the first phase of reopening begins. We'll know and follow your county or city's restrictions. Wear masks in public, stay six feet or more away from other people, and continue to wash your hands a lot. They also recommend staying home if you are sick. Well, here are the symptoms that you might experience with COVID-19. Those are fever, cough, and shortness of breath are still your mainstays, but the CDC says you might also experience chills, repeated shaking with chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, and a new loss of taste or smell. If you think you have COVID-19, don't panic. Just isolate yourself from other family members and call your doctor. The vast majority of cases can be managed at home. Well, some local nail salons reopened to customers Monday with new health guidelines in place. Andy Tran, the owner of Pink and White Nail Salon in Liberty, says that his salon has new strict cleaning and disinfecting policies in place. Everything down, every client, we desanitize everything, so every client between client wash hand between before and after. Tran says he is blown away by the response he's seeing. He tells us every appointment for the rest of the week is all booked up. Well, businesses in Overland Park are getting ready for customers. When Clothes Mentor, a consignment store, opens its doors next week, customers will see some changes. Gloves and hand sanitizer will be available at the entrance. They'll see new windows at the registers and arrows in the aisles to direct traffic. People interested in selling their gently used clothing will have to make an appointment. Then over at Studio 8 Salon, workers are getting rid of the waiting area and they're also, they plan to space out clients. But because salons are included in the second phase of the reopening plan, well, they'll have to wait at least until May 18th to reopen. My hope, especially for Johns County stylists, is that their clients will wait for us to open our doors and not, you know, leave a stylist to go to Missouri or to someplace that is open sooner. Under phase one, gatherings are limited to no more than 10 people. Masks and social distancing are encouraged in public. To see how states, counties, and cities are reopening, we have a comprehensive list of their plans at KMBC.com. And let's take a look now at the latest coronavirus case numbers for both Missouri and Kansas. Well, Missouri reported its largest jump in COVID-19 cases in a 24-hour period since the pandemic began. Those people would have all contracted the virus before the state reopened. 368 new cases were reported Monday, with most of those around St. Louis. Meanwhile, Kansas reported 215 new cases. A new local number show over 3,000 cases in Kansas City and our nine-county area. In Wyandotte County alone, there are over 875 cases. Well, Johnson County, Kansas is also being hit hard by the virus, and some new information is shedding light on who's being affected the most. Kami Sinai's Matt Evans live this morning to break it all down for us. Matt. Well, Rob, good morning. We're here at the Johnson County Department of Health and Environment on Nolatha. This is where people have been working to ramp up testing rapidly here in Johnson County and trace cases of the coronavirus to try and find the biggest outbreaks 
in Johnson County. Unfortunately, they have found some outbreaks inside long term care facilities in the county and now deaths inside those long term care facilities where well, they make up the majority of deaths inside Johnson County, according to new numbers released this week. There have been 33 deaths inside long term care facilities here. That's 73% of the total of 45 deaths in the county, even though the 129 cases at those types of facilities only make up about a quarter of all the total cases here. There have been outbreaks identified at nearly a dozen long term care facilities in the county the hardest hit facility being the Brighton Gardens of Prairie Village, which has 40 cases and eight deaths. Unfortunately, this is not a new trend or a trend that is specific to Johnson County, Kansas. This follows similar data, similar numbers that we've seen all across the country and all across the metro that shows just how quickly this coronavirus can spread inside these types of facilities where people are staying for an extended period of time and also just how susceptible their populations are to developing some serious complications due to COVID-19. Live in Olathe this morning, Matt Evans, KBC 9 News. Matt, thank you so much. Well, we have learned that a third person has now died from COVID-19 inside the Lansing Correctional Facility. The 50 year old inmate tested positive four days ago and was moved to a hospital in Kansas City, Kansas, where he died yesterday. 380 inmates have tested positive so far. 381 people at the Triumph Foods meat packaging plant in St. Joe have tested positive for COVID-19, but a company rep says none of them had any symptoms. Doctors say cases like this confirm a high number of people could be spreading COVID-19 without knowing they have the virus. Some of those people you're saying may have had symptoms. It's possible, but they were just mild enough that they, it didn't register as being a symptom. That shows you how easy it is, goes from one person to the next. And so when somebody's wanting to defy the, the recommendation or the orders that are in place to understand that they're not just putting themselves at risk, but they're putting their whole community at risk. Well, more test results are due this week for people at the plant. We'll keep you posted on the latest. By the way, you can track the curve of COVID-19 cases in Missouri and Kansas on our website. We up to update those numbers daily for you. Just go to KNBC.com and click on the coronavirus track the curve tab. Well, KBC 9 News investigates confirms more than $29 million to Clay County under the CARES Act is being delayed. It's because Clay County Presiding Commissioner Jerry Nolte wrote on a federal document that he had concerns about the funding formula. He said he did it in part because the distribution would have shortened Kansas City, Missouri at least $4 million. KCMO Mayor Quentin Lucas tells us that it's in stimulus money. It means that a lack of testing for more people. There are a lot of people who ask me, why don't we have more in the Northland? Well, you know, this is the this is the funding stream that helps us with that. Well, Clay County Commissioners Gene Owen and Luann Ridgeway held an emergency meeting last night to give themselves the authority to sign the federal document to release the money.